my lovely assistant Dan is going to hopefully hold up uh, woollyheritage.com it's the launch of Woolly Heritage, Bradford Woolly Heritage Community Interest Company's website today and if, you like, if you'd like to show my homemade wool comb take the uh, so and that is my homemade wool comb which is modelled on the one being held by Bishop Blaze uh, Bishop Blaze and Edward III, the most handsome Plantagenet, uh, a uh, vicious and later lethargic man who was uh, a big encourager of the wool trade. Bishop Blaze was patron saint of the wool trade on account of being an Armenian bishop who had his skin reputedly uh, scraped off by the Romans with iron combs, which made him the patron saint of wool combers, and then had his head chopped off. And they both stand at the uh, Foster Square entrance of Bradford's Wool Exchange, a Grade 1 listed building that was, uh, the foundation was laid on the 9th of August, 156 years ago today by Lord Palmerston, the Prime Minister, and it became the centre of Bradford's wool, wool um, business and therefore the centre of the world's wool business. Now I'm going to be walking around, um, talking about the history of both Wool and Bradford. We're currently walking up Hustler Gate, named after John Hustler, one of the most important men in uh, early uh, Bradford history, um, industrial history. Born 1715, uh, he was the driving force behind the Leeds Liverpool Canal, which was started in Bradford uh, and actually managed from Bradford for the first 50 years of its existence. He was also a major driver between for the setting up of Bradford's Peace Hall, which is at the end of this street, which is called Peace Hall Yard. The Bradford, Woolix, uh, the Bradford Club now occupies the premises. The Peace Hall was the first place where, covered place, official place for Bradford wool merchants to sell cloth or pieces. Uh, it was opened in 1774, the same year as the canal, the Bradford Canal was opened, two massive uh, steps forwards for Bradford's development into the world's uh, biggest ever wool city. And the next biggest after that was the Wool Exchange. We're now looking at what's the entrance to Waterstones, a really, really uh, brilliant piece of uh, modern um, architectural adaptation. Um, you used to have to go in from the two ends and the inside was apparently a Stygian gloom. I'm putting my mask on just to be safe. I've already sanitised my hands so uh, I'll not have to do it again. So, when we come in you'll see one of the reasons why it's a grade one listed building. Hammer beam roof. When you come in and I'd urge you to come in it's obviously a Waterstones now and as I say it's a very very good adaptation one of the stories from a book published by Waterstones when they did the work he says fiddling um, has the story of here we go has the story of a three-year-old girl being in here at Christmas time and saying to her mum Mum, is this where Jesus was born? Oh, you can see why she got the idea. If you look at the um, hammer beam roofs, you'll see shields. Uh, that one's dirty leads. Um, over here, we've got Bradford. Um, before this new entrance was built, you couldn't actually see the roof very well. And if you look closely at some of the shields, they're rubbish. Um, there's one of them that might be Doncaster, but nobody knows. Uh, as I say, Lockwood and Mawson designed the building, designed most of Bradford's famous Victorian buildings. The pillars are numbered. At the beginning, they probably told you which pillar to stand by, uh, depending on your trade. Down, um, down the bottom end, we have a statue of Cobden, Richard Cobden, Apostle of Free Trade. Um, free trade being a very important to the development of Bradford's wool trade. When Br Br Britain was the strongest economy in the world, they could afford to uh, have no taxes between borders and no tariffs. He was a, he's, the main reason he's remembered is um, Corn Laws. 
bread prices dropped because of the abolition of uh, protectionist corn laws, and he was popular with the working class because of that. The statue was a gift from an American who died before the, uh, uh, before the statue was finished. The two statues at the end of the wool exchange uh, of the king and the bishop were done by a man called Ptolemy, who died before they were put up. There's a pattern developing here. Anyway, another reason for coming down here is that um, on one side of Cobden's statue there, the representative from Listers, the massive mill in Manningham, would stand, and the other side would be Heel Brothers. All of the trading in here was trading in wool, not in cloth. So you'd start off with raw wool, um, possibly unsorted. In fact, it would be unsorted, the rawest wool, and then sorted wool, and then tops and noils, which is what you get when you comb the wool. And finally, the spinners would be the last buyers. And you could have wool traded three or four times. You could, have, you could sell wool in the morning, on a Monday and a Thursday especially, which were the two change days or exchange day days. Apparently, there'd be a massive queue of traffic from Leeds uh, to Bratford on Leeds Road on change days. Over there, next to the door, is the uh, local history stuff. You can get one of these, uh, and they're well worth uh, getting. I shall ask my glamorous assistant, could you pick me bag up? Cheers, mate. So, my glamorous assistant is Dan, as I say, um, owner of um, Jacob's Well Public House, somewhere where I'll be going later in the day. So... Hustler Gate, probably built about um, 1865, 1866. Um, ahead of us, there would have been a set of elm trees, and this would have been grass until probably the eight, uh, 1750s. Bank Street was built early in the 19th, late 18th. This, is, this would have been the Brown and Muffs entrance. The building there used to be Brown and Muffs. You can see there is a bore. It's not got its mouth open, so you can't see it's a tongueless bore, which is the symbol or was the symbol of Bradford. And down the side, we have the first of the carved heads. And this is Christopher Columbus, explorer, bit of a pirate. Um, Francis Drake, explorer, lot of a pirate. Walter Raleigh, um, explorer, uh, poet writer, introduce of uh, potatoes and tobacco, and a little bit of a pirate, but not as much as uh, uh, Francis Drake. Then coming down past the entrance, there always have been offices as part of the Wool Exchange setup. And to be in the Wool Exchange, you had to have a subscription and a ticket. You had to be vetted to be able to deal on the floor of the Wool Exchange. You could deal off the floor for a, for a, a daily or a monthly rate, uh, but if you didn't pay your subscription or you weren't uh, deemed to be fit to be on the floor, you didn't get in. This one's Anson, Admiral Anson, an explorer, but more famous for being a reformer of the Royal Navy. Not entirely sure why he's here, but um, coincidentally, um, the Avro Anson named after him was a twin-engined uh, patrol and general purpose aircraft that was built in the factory at Yeadon, the secret shadow factory where they built Lancaster bombers and uh, Avro Ansons. So, as I say, a bit of a coincidence. And lastly, James Cook, a uh, genuine explorer, uh, cartographer. Coming down to Market Street, used to be called New Street. It was built to stop uh, stagecoaches having to go up and down Ivegate and Kirgit. And that's where you go for your Corvid testing. And I'll just cross over the road. And there we have Lord Palmerston, the Prime Minister. He laid the foundation stone, as I say, in 1664. He was dead uh, uh, just over a year later. Um, when he laid the foundation stone, he was a popular and competent Prime Minister but he was not liked in Bradford by the working men because he refused to give them the vote or even pretend to be giving them the vote. So the working men of Bradford had a absolute solemn silence protest. And the idea that after this street was built, that just before, you know, the building site and he's laying the foundation stones and there have been loads of Bradford men tight lit. 
not saying anything. Oh, uh, welcome to Bradford. Next to him is um, uh, Gladstone, who was probably the best Prime Minister this country's ever had. That's in my opinion, of course. Uh, they've got steadily worse uh, uh, since then, uh, notably so recently. Next to him is Sir Samuel Cunliffe Lister, uh, builder, inventor and builder of Lister Mills, one of the two most important uh, or well-known industrialists in uh, Bradford's industrial history. Lister Park's named after him because he gave it to uh, he gave the park to Bradford in exchange for a modest ten thousand quid. Um, next to him we have Richard Arkwright, um, inventor of well supposedly the inventor he did invent a, a spinning frame to better spin um, cotton. Spinning frame had already been invented, but what he really did is he uh, created, invented more or less, the modern factory system. And I'm filming this on something made in a factory, and you're watching it on something made the fact in a factory. Um, from the bottom end, we've got uh, Cobden again. We've got uh, Titus Salt. We have um, Robert. Stevenson, son of George Stevenson, his dad invented the rocket, but Robert Stevenson built, was the engineer for at least a third of all the railways built in Britain, and he was a better engineer than Brunel. He also was the engineer for Bradford's first railway, which arrived in Bradford at Foster Square, which you can just about see the screen of uh, between the buildings at the end of Market Street, so 1846. And the last one is James Watt, who is uh, the father of steam. Um, he didn't invent the steam engine, but he created the high-pressure steam engine, which powered the mills that, um, that uh, uh, Arkwright um, developed. Arkwright's mills were powered by water. Right, two last things. I'm going to take you into pizza pieces to show you the, where the uh, foundation stone is. And then I'm going to go and have a drink in the exchange bar. So, mask on. This used to be Spinks's restaurant, and you and just look at the details. This is where the woolmen would come to have their dinner or a few drinks, and there used to be two. Are we live again? Buongiorno. This, uh, and there, hopefully, this is part of the recording, but if it isn't, um, f uh, well, fair dues. So, I'm just going to... Oh, this, this is actually looking better on this phone than it's looking in my eyes. But there again, my eyes are getting, well, a lot older than this phone. So disconnected, so it may not be recording, but I uh, oh know it says it's live. And here we are, the last of the tour. Ooh. Ooh. Right then, lads, have we been watching the video? Right. So at that, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll stop the broadcast. I'll thank you for, uh, thank you for your uh, watching, if you have been. Um, and hopefully, if you have been watching, I'm doing this again at half past. So uh, thanks and bye.